Hi guys, it's real with not a toot. Today I want to talk about angles, triangles, and quads. And you've seen the title. Angles are perfectly fine. Let me tell you why. People who tell you that you need to use quads, they're only half full of shit. Now the truth is that you do need quads for specific things. Now the most important part in all of this is that geometry has a purpose. It needs to have a purpose. You don't buy a truck to drive to a store to buy apples. You don't buy a workstation to read emails, right? You don't buy a gun to kill a mosquito. Do you know what I mean? It's a purpose that matters, not what you're using. It's just a tool. Quad and gun and triangle is a tool. And your job as a modeler is to understand how to use it and when. If you create a model and you want to bring it into game engine, it's going to get triangulated. See, the difference between triangle and any other type of geometry is a triangle cannot be deformed. And what I mean by that is you can't bend it by moving one vert. Sit on a three-leg chair, it will not wobble. Four-leg chair will. Five-leg chair will wobble. Now, the reason for it is you can't deform it. It just doesn't deform. On the other hand, Anything bigger than that with more vats will deform. So if I'm going to go to a larger piece that's been triangulated, you can see um, that all quads were turned into triangles. But you see this mesh is awful because you have different sizes of triangles. Now, this was all quad mesh. It was pure quad mesh, right? It was triangulated. Now let's say this thing is going to be animated in a way that... Um, is going to be very soft and every single piece of it is going to move and deform. It would shade awfully even though it's all quads, because some quads are too big. These triangles will shade differently than the small ones. So what you need to do is actually go ahead and use something like, for example, a quadrimesher or any other um, retopology tool that you have in, in Blender. This one is actually a paid add-on, but you have free retopology tools in, in Blender. And once I read the you see all the quads are, are, you know, they have the same size. And now that thing will animate well. It's still too heavy for a game, of course, too many quads. But you get the point. So, even quads sometimes are bad. Again, it's all about purpose. It's how you use topology, not, not what you're using, okay? Another thing that quads are good for is looping. So, you can create like an edge loop, you see? around this whole arm or whatever it is, tentacle. And if I have end guns in here, I couldn't do it because the loop would stop. So if I, for example, subdivide this mesh, uh, this edge, and I'm going to have an end gun, you see my loop will stop here because it's not a quad. And that's why if you want to work with loops and you want to create loops that flow in a specific way for you to be able to deform the mesh, then yes, quads are important. And it's not just quads, but the flow of quads. And that's what they refer to as good topology. But if you're creating a non-animated, by non-animated I mean objects that will not deform in animation, so hard surface, like for example uh, this one, right? You don't really need all quads. Yes, I do have quads in this mesh, but they were created to support the shape. But then again, if I'm gonna, for example, go into this mesh, it's been all cut with bullions. And the reason for it that I was able to do it is because I had the mesh dense enough to support my cuts and my bevels. If I go to this mesh, you can see I have angons all over the place. That's an angon, it's five. And it's, it's not really important what you're using. It's important how you're using it. If, for example, this end gun here was much larger, it would bend because it would not support this curvature um, that's going on here. You see, because it's small enough, it supports the curvature. That's why it can be an end gun. If I go to, for example, um, this Mac, right? You think it's quads. No, it's end guns. If I grab this piece, for example, this is an angon, this is an angon, and it's a curved surface. Do you see any sh shading issues? I don't. It's not about what you are using again, but how you are using it. You have tools, for example, like um, normal transfer. I have a video on this, you can watch it. Or shrink wrapping. 
Chris Plush has a fantastic video on shrink wrapping technique for hard surface modeling. When you can create beautiful, um, perfectly shaded um, surfaces with bullions and not all quads. Again, it's not about what tools you're using, what type of geometry you're using. It's about how you're using it and knowing and understanding how to support a curvature, how to support the bevel, how it works, how it will shade. And then you adjust your technique accordingly. Some stuff here is quads, like for example the pipe. Right? Or this shape. But why would I need quads in this? I just have one line. It's a flat surface, it doesn't bend, it will not deform. You tell me, why do I need quads in here? I don't. So again, it's it's just it baffles me because this obsession with quads is just absolutely retarded. So again, guys, please understand that geometry needs to have a purpose. If you are creating a model for an animation, it's an organic model, and it will bend, deform, then you need to not only have quads, but you need to have quads of the same size on the surface it will bend because if you don't then even though you have quads you're gonna have different type of triangles in terms of size big and small ones and they will shade completely differently so even though if you have quads all perfect mesh all made of quads it will all look like dog shit okay and that is the most important part to remember when you start learning modeling it's about understanding what you are making and what's going to be doing. Is it a static object, animated object, in-game object, a concept design? Um, why would you need quasi in concept design? I mean, like, you, you tell me, why would I need to retopologize this thing? It's just a concept art, right? It's not going to be in the game. If it were to be put in the game, I would optimize it. I would retopologize it. I would probably have to drop it to like 100, 140,000 polys from 9.2 million, right? So there will be a lot of work, but it's, you know, it's doable. But it, again, it doesn't curve or bend. It's, it's all made of steel. So it's stiff. So I wouldn't need quads. I would just simply need less geo that supports the shading. And that's all I will need to do. So again, let's say you, for example, texturing and you need the, the normal maps to, you know, curve perfectly on the surface. Then, yeah, you, you might want to consider doing quads. But if you create something like this, or even something that is on a curved surface like this one, you really don't need, um, you really don't need quads. Let me show you the base mesh for this model, right? This is the base mesh for this model, okay? It's created from a single plane. And this mesh is quads because I needed to subdivide it, right? I have a subdivide modifier running on it. So if I apply this subdivision modifier, correct? You will see that's the reason why I have quads on this mesh because I wanted to subdivide it. So yes, the base mesh is quads. Okay, but let's change the matcap for a second to this one. I want to show you this part. Do you see any shading issues here? It's an angon. And a really big one. On a bullion cut with a bevel on it. Again, it's not about what type of polygons you are using. It's all about when you are using them, and how, and what purpose they're going to serve. It's like talking to women. It's not about what you're going to tell them. You can tell them all kinds of stuff. It's about how you're going to say it, and when. It's timing. Like in comedy, it's timing. And in here you have purpose as well. So the design, the execution, right, and, and the finishing finalizing of the project should all be in tune should should all be attuned to one another right coherent 
So if you, for example, give a game asset to a, to a company and don't come, come back to you and say, listen, man, this, this is shitting like shit. Are you going to tell them it's all quads? They don't give a fuck. It's about you understanding that if you're going to use big quads with small quads, they will triangulate into very different types of planes. One's going to be big and the other's going to be small and the shading will break. If I create something in hard surface, as long as my shading doesn't break, I can use anything I want in my model because it doesn't matter. And that's the bottom line. So if you think that you need all quads for modeling, that's bollocks. If you think that you cannot use booleans in modeling, that's bollocks. If you think that booleans break shading, well, so does, so does bending the item. Anything can break shading. You just need to know how to deal with it. Right? So only, you know, thinking that I shouldn't be using bulls because it breaks the mesh. It's, it's just bullshit. Look at this. It's all bullions. You don't believe me? Let me show you. Where's my cutters? There are my cutters. This has been sliced to an oblivion. Remember this mech I showed you before? There's 800 cutters running on that mesh. Okay? It's all bulls. It, it doesn't matter if it's curved, straight, flat, whatever. As long as you know how to control the mesh, you're going to be fine. So anyway, that's the end of my rant. And hopefully you learned something useful and you will think differently now about modeling. You need to approach it with an open mind. And again, think about purpose. Everything you do in life needs to have a purpose, right? Thanks for watching. Drop a like and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Have a good one.